hey guys welcome back so in this one we're going to go ahead and set up our mac os computer for react native development on the react native dev doc site we have an environment setup guide so in this one i'm going to be covering setting up for android and for ios you guys can use this guide here for ios it's pretty straightforward you don't usually get a ton of problems so you just need to get cocoa ports and also xcode so once you have those you should be good to go but on Android, there is a lot we need to take care of from things like installing Android Studio to SDK tools to make sure our JDK is up to date, setting up these tools in the in the path of our machine. So this is the one we are going to be going, going over. But if you already have it set up, then you can safely proceed to the next video where we create our real project. So let's go ahead and get started and we are going to need to first get Android Studio and first thing we need is to make sure we have of course node.js and of course with node.js which i'm guessing you would you do so if you don't have just download it or you just use brew if you don't have brew just google how to install brew i mean then make sure you get node and from that then we need to install the jdk so one thing i want to introduce you guys to here is uh, you can be able to check which tools you need by using the doctor command that's available on the ci package so you have to type something like npx and you run this when you have node already so npx at react native community cli then doctor so you want to run this you can run it anywhere but usually you use this to debug if you have when your application is not like booting up but we can still use it here to tell what things we do we need for react native on our system so currently you can see that we have the jdk i think i had it in the past so so you want to first install the JDK, then we are going to install Android Studio and all this, make sure we have all these checks here. So uh, to install the JDK, I already have it, but you want to run this. If it doesn't work, you can even get the installer by, by typing in install JDK. So I'm going to stop here. So let me just paste this JDK 8, let's run this. So you want to make sure that your JDK version is 8 and above. Yeah, so I already have it. That's why you see this. So hopefully yours is going to go ahead and... Hopefully yours is just going to go ahead and complete. So now that we are there, let's go ahead and install Android Studio. So you want to go to Android Studio. You want to type in Android Studio. Android Studio. Go to the download site. I'll just click download. They also have ads. That's crazy. It's like saying, all right, so I'll click download Android Studio. We need to accept the agreement. Okay, so I have a Mac with an Intel chip. That's what I'm gonna click. Anyway, let's wait for our Android Studio to finish and then we are gonna proceed from there. All right, so our Android Studio download has finished. So I'm gonna double click on it just so we can install. So let me get this here. All right. Okay, so we want to move this to our applications, of course, like that. So now if you go to our applications, okay, so here we should be able to find Android Studio. I'm going to double click on it just so it can open up. Then we can open. Okay, so we're going to get this window saying that we don't have the SDK. So we want to click next and then we want to, we want to specify that yes, we want to download the SDK. Then we want to click next. These are the things it needs to install. We click finish. And it's going to continue installing like the SDK tools it needs. So we can proceed from here. All right, so once the installation of all these tools is ready, we're gonna have this last line here saying Android SDK is up to date. And this is where the Android, this is where the Android SDK actually is. So we can click finish here. Okay, yeah, so we wanna click this button and then we have options here. We have the SDK manager. We have where we can open up the SDK manager. So I'm going to click on it. And here you can see we have basically the platform tools. So we have the latest one here, API 31. So make sure you have at least one of these. I'm also going to install 29 and also 30. I believe we are going to be for our for our react native app it's going to be set up to use 29 or 30 so it's wise to just install these two 
we don't have to come back and forth so I'll click OK we need to accept these licenses so I'll click next uh, when I'm gonna send it to the background so when you click on AVD manager again you're going to be brought here and this is where you can manage your emulators or your virtual devices so you want to click on create a virtual device so I'm gonna choose the default one here so I'll choose a pixel so I'll click next so we need to have an image so you can think of an image as the OS the Android OS version it is running so we want to click the latest one I'll click the R one we also need to accept the agreement and click next then it's gonna go ahead and continue to install the continue to download the system image to install on our emulator all right so the components have been installed here so you can see a done option here so for some reason it took a while and i had to press somewhere on the screen just so it can show me that it was done so i'm gonna click finish here and now we have the system image installed so i'm gonna click next then we need to choose a device we'll use the pixel 2 i'll just keep the default settings then it's gonna go ahead and create one so here we go we have an emulator so to run it you want to click on this play play icon so i'll click it then you should be able to start it so you will see launching emulator so for us what we need is to be able to make sure we have the sdk tools and react native can find them and now we have the emulator so to check that we want to go back to our terminal it's going to type npx run this let's confirm that we want it to proceed and now you can see we have android studio but we don't have the sdk and also we don't have the home so for us to fix this we want to go to the react native docs so you see what we have here so we're going to copy these details here by default your terminal is going to be using bash so we need to look for the dot bash profile config and add there these details here so you might not have it so what you need to do is on the terminal so i'm going to come here and stop this we want to go to the root of our current user so currently if we do a pwd we are actually in the root so here is where our bash profile is gonna be i'm going to open this in vim so i will type in vi and then the name which is bash profile so this is the config so here it's gonna be bash profile so i already have it but if you don't have it continue to write this and that's going to go ahead and create it if you don't have it so i'll go ahead and confirm i'll go ahead and click enter and that opens it up so when you open up vim what you want to do is you want to click i to enter insert mode so on your keyboard type in i and down here you should be able to see insert and that enables us to be able to add there some other things so i'm going to scroll up to the end and leave there some spaces so on a new line i will just paste in I will just paste in the things we got from react native so now here we are basically referencing where our sdk is and then we are setting up this path to the other android component tools like the emulator such that we can be able to access them in the terminal or even our commands that we write using react native can be able to get things like the emulator and these other tools so to save this you want to first exit insert mode so type escape on your keyboard and then you want to save and exit this file and you do that by pressing full current then wq and that's going to save and exit so once so once you so once you update this file you're going to need to update your terminal to be able to get those new configuration settings in bash profile and you can do that by typing in source then dot bash profile like this and that should be able to go ahead and update the console to know about the new changes so you might be using another terminal in my case i have two i have bash and also zsh uh let's see yeah if i do an ls dash la so we should be able to see that i also have a i guess it's called zsh yeah me i also have a zsh you also want to look for the ZS, ZSH RC file and update it. So still use Vim. Then you want to type in .zsh RC. Okay. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing we did the other time. So I'll just uh, enter insert mode. Then over here, then over here, just go to a new line, like a fresh line and put there what you copied from the site. Then we wanna save this. By the way, by the way, this here, by the way, this is a variable that is set globally. So this is a variable that is available in the terminal and it represents the path where your current logged in, where your current user lies. Eh? So, in, in, so we just bring it in as a variable and then we reference the SDK. And that's what you see here being used as a variable here because here we just define a new environment variable then we can use it as a variable here and not having to repeat all this so let's exit insert mode so we do that by clicking escape on our keyboard let's save and quit also let's source in zish rsc just so our terminal gets updated so it's zish rsc so if you have and so if you have node if you have the latest version of node then you should have npm that's latest which can enable us to use the npx tool so you type in npx react native then you want to run in it then the the name of the project so in this case i'm going to type in example project just so we can be able to have something to test with and verify that the installation is completed and right away you can see we have react native kicking in and uh downloading the template so downloading a template that's going to represent our initial how our initial project is going to be so from setting up things like linting to setting up our default scripts all those things so let's wait and see how this one completes and we take it from there so notice that it went ahead to download the template then it installed dependencies and on the installation of dependencies, it went ahead to start installing Cocoa Pod dependencies. So this is specific for iOS and you want to make sure you have Cocoa Pod set up. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So hopefully you have Cocoa Pod set up. You can just install it using Gem for Ruby and it should install quickly. So now the boilerplate scaffolding is done. So now we can CD into example project. And let me open this in VS Code just so we can see what we have. And maybe do some changes okay so now here we have our example react native project let me make this one bigger okay so i'm going to bring up the terminal just so we can see we can run some scripts and try to get it running on the emulator so i'm going to scroll to the package json file so you notice we have a start script which basically starts the react native dev server that enable us to have like hot reload and those kinds of things so let's go ahead and run that so npm run start so that goes ahead to start the server so we get uh, server is running now let's tr let's try to run this on ios let's let's try to run this on android so i'm gonna get a new bash bash console and type in npm run android so the android script is also given to us by default in the scripts for in the scripts here and um, this is where we normally get issues so you will see that yeah so you'll see that now it detected our server is running the one for the dev the dev server is running and now you can see it goes ahead to check that we have the android sdk tools so just pick them up preparing them since this is the first time it might take a while to set up everything but now you can see it goes ahead to do this it looks like some some installations were not complete and that's why it didn't get this but you can see it's preparing them and uh, let's hold let's hold on and see what it ends up with okay so the build completed it actually was very fast it took like one minute actually so the build completed successfully and we have the app open up in the our emulator